Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Fluent in San Francisco. I'm here with Stuart. Stu? Stu. Stu. Stu's fine, yes. Stu, Stu Nicholas. Stu. And how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank so you. how's the conference been for you so far? It's been great. It's been great. A lot of good uh, booth traffic, uh, good uh, keynote, good session we had, and a lot of interesting content in the conference as well. So you gave a keynote that people are buzzing about, conversational um, technology in kind of IoT, robotics, Watson, all these things coming together. Yes. Uh -huh. And can you unpack that a little bit and, and let people know what it was all about for those that couldn't join earlier? Sure, yeah. Um, what we're looking at is what role does conversation uh, play in computing? We did a little demonstration where we did a voice-driven uh, little robotic sphere, but you can apply that to a variety of problem spaces and domains. What's really interesting and exciting about this space is it's very simple to get started from a web development perspective, uh, very easy to get into this space. And the first thing you teach uh, in this, you teach your conversational uh, computing about is how to learn new things. Much like we have uh, domain scripting languages today where we, we register components into a system that allow you to do more programmatic capabilities, there's no reason in the future we can't think about registering speech modules into systems to give you more uh, capabilities across the set. For example, um, we can register uh, CRUD kind of activities, create, update, remove, and delete activities on nouns and verbs in, a, a, in an English sentence that can easily be applied to a variety of domains. So it's very interesting. I've wanted for years to have ambient computing in my house where uh, the computer's in our conversation as we're conversing here now, and every time you say, I wonder, I wonder if, or I was thinking about this, uh, we can have that NLP done ahead of time and as part of our conversation. Yes, yeah, so Amazon has something called the echo coming? Is that similar to what you're talking yes, about? Because it's, it's going to be picking up ambient Correct. conversations? Yes, correct. And, 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 and I've wanted this for years around a table like this. I've also seen a really interesting uh, aspect of this. When we're doing meetings internal to IBM, we have thousands of people on the phone. We've got a huge amount of expertise around the virtual table that we're not able to tap into. As a speaker, I would love to be able to hear what folks are saying, and as I'm speaking, having my uh, speech trans uh, translated to text, and run NLP on that, identify interesting topics. I can pull those off as I'm viewing your uh, viewing this the the meeting, and also if I'm adding content to the meeting, it doesn't get lost in a big serial interaction among uh, texting back and forth, right? Or or I am in back. And so forth. is this going to be uh, this conversational? component here, is this going to be hooked into the web? I mean, are, are people going to be driving applications in conversation mode from the web, from the I computer? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Um, it's not it, going to be an app or a phone yeah, or a device well, or we definitely have those the today, above, right? Yeah, but yeah. this is embedding it in the domain of your app is very straightforward and very easy to do. As, as I mentioned, you can teach, the first thing you do is you teach it how to watch what you do, kind of programming by example, and then you say, okay, this is how I create a customer. So when I say create customer, it's gonna drive these things, right? So it's just an evolution of our domain scripting that we've had where we script up solutions, but now it's gonna watch and learn and be able to run those for you. So what industries do you see are gonna be the most interesting when this starts to move in? to them? Is it automobiles? Is it health? Or I think it's going to be a cross uh, industry. I was talking to some folks in healthcare where they've got a bunch of uh, data and a bunch of content that they want to begin to interact with uh, the doctors to interact and uh, just ask questions and interact with it that way. We've seen some of this with the Watson technology, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, it, you can apply it to a variety of cross industry. So IBM has this Bluemix group right mm -hmm. and is this a stack that is defined and is it working with IOT as well is that I mean can you unpack a little bit around Bluemix and yes um, the um, the conversational computing is built on the Watson text-to-speech and speech-to-text services, which are offered as part of Bluemix. There are other services as well that are available that you can use in this space. Uh, but what we were was we were a controller. If you do a nice um, MVC architecture, you can envision speech coming into it more as a controller, as a, an augmenting your controller, right? So that's what we did in the little sample we put together, and we, uh, and, you know, uh, and have a framework around that. That's says, okay, um, when I come in, I'm going to initiate a set color command for the Sphero ball. Uh, 
and that set color command publishes an IoT event just as a controller would do, and that IoT event then goes through the normal application flow and ultimately arrives at the device for it to take its action. So with this conversational mode, you're, you're, you're generating a lot of data. Is that, I mean, is my voice data? Yes. When it uh, hits the it device? Can, it can be, yes. So uh -huh. uh, how are you guys going to manage all the data? It's moving from big data to massive data with all the devices in the world? Yes, and yes, and you were asking earlier about the industries. Um, we can enable business users to ask questions and drive big data analytics through this conversational mode, right? So if you have a Spark cluster set up with a bunch of data that you've, you've ingested or vented from sensor data coming in from an IoT device in the medical field, you can envision having a line of business users interacting verbally with this driving interactions. Find me data on driving records or find me data on, a, uh, uh, on these certain uh, medical devices and then correlate that with this data and actually drive that through a conversational mode. So that's going to be a massive amount of data to sift through and, Correct. and as that data stacks keep growing and the IoT stacks keep growing, are they going to grow together or are there are there going to be opportunities for companies to blend in between them? I, I, we'll see. We'll see. I think there's going to be a little of both. Uh, but, you know, I envision right now uh, IoT can vent into a an historical uh, data set where we can run big data analytics over over time, develop models, maybe put an IPython notebook in front, do some data scientists on it, develop models, turn those models loose on data in motion, and away you go right, as you ingest the content. So do you have the coolest job in the world or what? I, I love my job, <laughs> I have to say, I really do, yes. Thanks, Stu, this Thank has been great. You, great.